this will close the end of the ONS session and I will hand back to uh, Don Burke at GWP who I believe is going to talk us through uh, information on or, uh, or an update on integrating administrative data into the Family Resources Survey as part of the transformation work. So I'll hand over to you now. Thank you. Um, hi all. Good afternoon. Um, just bear with me for one minute while I try to share my screen. Right. Um, very good. Um, thanks um, very much. Um, I'm Don Brook from <clears throat> the FRS Transformation Team um, at Service Branch and DWP. So I'm going to go through a little bit on our FRS Transformation uh, project. Uh, the work we've been doing to integrate administrative data into the survey. Um, what I'm covering today is all with a, a few small updates um, covered in the <clears throat> publication that um, we released last March, and we've got the links to that publication um, in this presentation. And I, I'm sure um, at least some of you will have will have seen um, publication. So I'm going to go a little bit on the background to FRS data linking, <clears throat> the legal basis and methodology, how we started or how we were enabled to start this project, um, the benefits of integrating administrative data into the FRS, um, the main FRS transformation work stands, a little bit about HMRC, PAYE and self-assessment data, where we are with that, um, because we've got quite a bit more work to do there. And then the development work that we've been doing to integrate benefits and tax credits into the FRS on an experimental basis. As part of that work, uh, we ended up con conducting a review of grossing as well. So we've got a, a, an experimental revised approach to grossing as well. So I'll let you know what our next steps are after that as well. So um, first off, um, the key background to all the work that we're doing um, to integrate administrative data um, is linking FRS respondents to their admin records. So back in 2007, <clears throat> we started asking FRS respondents to consent uh, to link their survey responses to administrative data using um, the old Data Protection Act requirements. So we linked re consenting respondents by name, address, postcode, and date of birth to the DWP's customer information system to get their national insurance numbers. So the customer information system is the repository of every national insurance number that has been issued and the latest addresses for people with national insurance numbers. So on average, with explicit consent, 66% <clears throat> of respondents consented. And then with the method we had for matching, we matched about 80% of consenting respondents, giving us an effective match rate of just over 50%. So that limited what we could do with um, linking really, although within the department and um, we did have very particular uses for um, the linking file that we produce with NINOs and um, FRS identifiers, um, not least for um, producing the um, estimates of um, benefit take up. So then with the GDPR coming in in 2018, um, it really was transformative for our ability to link admin data. Uh, because GDPR has a very specific public task um, legal basis for data processing, and we use that now for all of our FRS processing. And in particular, it gives a, us a, an alternative to consent as the lawful basis for linking. So this change means we start <clears throat> from being able to <clears throat> attempt to link everybody to their admin records or identify their need, as I should say, to, in the first instance. Um, and then it depends on how good we are at, at that linking. So starting from 100%, we've made significant improvements to our methodology, and now we can link at least 95% of respondents to their admin records. And with that, now we've got a five-year time series, um, which we produced um, benefits tables in particular using, um, but we're actually, yeah, we're, we're, we're almost at a six-year time series. We're doing the final quality assurance of the FRS 2324 um, lookup file. Um, as well. So that's a you know an extending time series of FRS identifiers and printed NINOs, which we use to link respondents to their admin data sources. So um, while we're doing this, then um, we're looking to integrate 
all of the main DWP benefit admin sources plus HMR CPAOIE, um, self-assessment, tax credits, child benefit, uh, plus some other um, more minor sources into the FRS with the aim of eliminating the long-standing undercount of benefits and tax credits on the survey. And our initial assumption at the start of the um, project was that the undercount was largely due to respondent misreporting. Um, we want to improve the accuracy of employment and self-employment income by actually using the PAYE and self-assessment records. And we can add analytical power by just using more information from those admin sources. So in doing that, we're looking to reduce costs and respondent burden, because if we make good use of admin data, we can shorten the questionnaire by dropping many of the benefit and income questions. They just won't be needed, um, certainly in the current form, um, if we've got uh, the admin data to use instead. And also we think we will be able to, in the long run, make um, significant improvements to timeliness um, because the admin data sources are generally available um, quite soon after the end of the FRS reference um, period, you know, the end of March um, each year. Um, and also we're talking about starting with admin sources which are um, clean compared with the survey data. Um, so we think we can have um, you know, a, a step change in timeliness um, through this process. Okay, the main work strands that we're looking at or have been looking at since the start of this project now, the lookup file development. I mean, we've got a um, a method um, and process which we're very happy with, giving us you know high quality um, matches for ninety five percent plus of of respondents. But there's more that we can do, and we're we're looking to refine that process um, over time. Um, so that's a specific area um, working on DWP benefits. HMRC tax credits and child benefit is one other strand. RTI, um, data from HMRC, another, and self-assessment, and then other admin sources. And um, at the start of the project, we didn't realise that crossing was going to be a fairly major um, issue, and it became a, a, a work strand all of its own. Um, and then coming out of our work on um, lookup file development, we've been um, conducting non-response research as well, using the methods that we have used to um, link respondents um, or identify respondents on the customer information to identify non-respondents, but that's a complicated area of work um, which is ongoing, so I'm not going to cover that in detail today, but there is some more information in the publication on that. Um, and ultimately, once we're using admin data, um, we'll need to revise our end-to-end -end FRS process to um, you know, take account of the use of admin data and to maximize the uh, potential efficiency. So they're all of the areas that we're covering through um, transformation. Um, a little bit on, because we have done, um, you know, non-trivial work on um, HMRC, RTI and self-assessment data so far, but with limited data, we've only got two years um, uh, currently of um, RTI, PAY information from HMRC. Um, and we've got a very limited self-assessment data set within the department. It's a 100% data set, but it's very limited um, just to sole trade or partnership taxable profit. Um, so on the RTI side, <clears throat> the analysis we've done shows that there's a close match between RTI and FRS employment income values for most respondents. But we've got a significant minority of mismatches, and that's people reporting employment on the FRS but with no RTI records and people not reporting employment on the FRS but with RTI records. And on the self-assessment side, we've got um, FRS estimates of employment income which are significantly higher than self-assessment um, reported taxable profit. That's even when we link respondents um, who say they have consulted their self-assessment tax return. So this finding that we've had is consistent with other research in this area, including by colleagues at ONS. Um, so we suspect that the reasons behind this may be due to misreporting taxable profits by FRS respondents. And also some respondents um, may actually be company directors and they're reporting self-employment income as self-employment income, income which may be actually paid via dividends or PAYE. But we don't have the information currently um, the detailed uh, self-assessment information to um, do the analysis to work out what's actually going on here. 
Um, but I'm very pleased to say that, and this has happened since we, we published in March, that we have a signed agreement now with HMRC for um, RTI information up to 23-24 and a comprehensive self-assessment um, data set, including information on dividends and savings and property income, etc. Again, covering the years up to 23-24 and we're, we're expecting that information um, from HMRC by the end of August. So setting up also for our main work on RTI and self-assessment in the autumn. Um, so moving on to benefits, which is um, the main area of, of work um, and the main area covered by our publication as well. Um, so this is just the table M6, which is in the main FRS uh, publication, the 22-23 um, table. Um, and it's showing, um, you know, by benefit, the um, percentage of undercount on the FRS on the gross estimates compared with um, the actual admin data sources. So we've got an average of an, un of an undercount of 20% um, across all of the benefits, which is a long-standing um, uh, issue with the FRS. Um, so then our approach to uh, um, um, integration of admin data um, is to link FRS respondents to their benefits admin data sources select receipts at the time of interview, re retrieve benefit amounts from the central payment system at DWP to get the actual amounts that they've been paid at the time of the interview, and then conduct a segmentation analysis, which I'll go into in another slide, um, comparing FRS respondents um, and their actual admin um, situation, and then impute benefit amounts for unlinked um, cases um, to create a fully admin based benefits table. So that's the, that's the process. And there are a variety of different um, uh, data sources and different systems that the benefits um, the data comes from. And so we make a, a, a we make use of a variety of different sources um, for this work. So attendance allowance is a good example of what we're doing here to illustrate what's going on overall. Um, <clears throat> so in this table, you can just see the the uh, the, the blue um, bar here. Um, represents we've got 39 in, in 22 23 FRS we had 39,261 adults that crosses to the GB population of 51 million um, 95 percent of their linked represent 47 million and five percent are not linked so when we link all adults to the attendance allowance um, data set um, you can see then that um, they break down into various segments that this population. So for the non-linked, they either don't report the attendance allowance or they report it. <clears throat> and we don't, we can't match them because we don't have their Nino, can't match them to the winter record. So there's a small number there. Um, and then you've got cases that misreport attendance allowance. So they're only on the FRS, but they're not on the admin records. Then you've got a large group where um, they match um, the self-reporting uh, they self-report and they're, they're found with the admin records. And then you've got for attendance as a very substantial group where they're on the admin record, so they are in receipt, but they haven't reported it. So this is showing the value um, very starkly of using admin data to, um, you know, remove a substantial undercount and then remove a smaller amount of um, misreporting that we have as well. Um, so what? Our intention um, was at the start simply was that we thought we'd, yes, we will we'll link, we'll use the admin records, and then we will impute amounts for um, the uh, cases that are um, not um, linked. Um, well, initially we were thinking that we might we might impute receipt and amounts for um, those that are not linked. Um, to make up um, a total which um, it matches the admin um, data. Um, so the position with unlinked cases is a little bit complicated. Um, I will come back to that. But one of the stark things that came out when we did this work initially was that actually when we linked and grossed <coughs> attendance allowance, for, um, uh, we got a total which is 1.2 million and the caseload is actually 1.4 million. So the process of linking did not partially, but did not fully remove the undercount. 
Um, so this is something that uh, caused us quite a bit of concern at the time. And then what happened was when we repeated <clears throat> this process across all of the um, DWP benefits and tax credits and um, child benefit, a similar um, picture um, emerged. So we can see here down at the <clears throat> these two um, lines here, you've got the FRS admin based remaining under count after we have linked and grossed. So on average, <clears throat> With just linking and current grossing, we were solving 65% of the undercount, um, but there's 35% um, um, remaining. So <clears throat> the conclusion that we did come to after various investigations on this is essentially is that um, yeah, the there is a bias in the FRS sample where um, benefit um, recipients are underrepresented in ways which are not corrected by the current crossing um, regime. So that led, led us to a significant um, a grossing review. Um, so this um, table here <clears throat> outlines gross for the current variable name for the grossing factor on the FRS. And then we created a, a number of test gross five um, uh, grossing factors. Um, so you've got a, a you've got a standard set of long-standing grossing factors on on the FRS and um, controlling for age, sex, region, mainly using census information, etc. Um, and then uh, what we've done is we have for the main um, benefits we have added um, the administrative counts, the average across the survey year as control totals. Um, so we've gone through a, a process of development and iteration on this, adding control totals for um, benefits caused some other problems for us um, in that in particular, when we were able to resolve the undercount with the new closing factor um, for benefits, but then that pushed the employment count on, on self, self report employment count on, on the FRS out. Um, so then as a result, we um, added extra controls using RTI PAYE counts, um, and that causes some problems for um, self <clears throat> um, employment. So we've ended up adding um, control totals for self employment as well, um, which is getting us to something which is approximately, um, you know, uh, getting us balanced results across all of the key variables on, on the FRS. But <clears throat> um, I, I pointed out some of the problems that we got in self assessment data and RTI or, or earlier. So to make this work on an experimental basis, we've had to make some assumptions um, about those that are reporting employment, but we don't, we haven't linked them to RTI and similarly with, with, with um, self um, employment um, to make this work. But these are these are provisional and experimental, um, you know, assumptions that we're making, which are subject to change. Um, <clears throat> so, We've also gone through a process of um, developing imputation routines for unlinked cases, again, across all of the benefits. Um, and um, yes, a variety of different imputation methods have been developed depending on the particular benefits. Um, some of them are, are done by calculation. Um, you know, we're using hot decking for some other um, benefits, et, et cetera. Um, and there's some more detail on that in the publication. I think I, I don't have time to really go into it too much more than here. Um, but with putting all of that together, the, the uh, um, we've got a, 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 a kind of a, a developed process now, which is giving us illustrative results for benefits. Um, so the steps in the process are linking the 95% um, with Nino's teacher, the administered benefit sources. Um, identify benefit awards, deductions, repayments <clears throat> for linked respondents from the central payment system. Um, use self-reported receipt with credibility checking that they are actually have the characteristics suitable for the benefits um, to impute receipt for unlinked cases. Disregard um, misreporting um, and then apply the experimental grossing factor um, to produce gross estimates of benefit receipts which match the actual benefit populations. Um, so when we've combined all of these results to produce administrative database FRS benefits tables, 
and then populating relevant other tables on the FRS as well, all on an experimental um, basis. Um, so then um, I'm using um, a, a using universal credit as an example here of what's happening through these various stages. Um, this is just one column from a, a set of tables which which cover all of the benefits for the five years that are available on the um, um, FRS um, internet pages. So um, this is 2223 <clears throat> um, FRS. So the administrative caseload, which is the average over 2223, was 4.9 million. The FRS caseload estimate using gross four was 3.1 million. When we integrated admin data, we just brought that up to 3.8 million. Um, when we apply a re revised grossing with a control total for um, universal credit, um, we can match the administrative caseload. Um, and then in terms of coverage, that's just showing here that, you know, the FRS caseload on its own, pure survey based with gross for is 64% um, of the, the count is 64% of the actual admin caseload. Um, and when you integrate admin data without revising grossing, you get to 78% and obviously um, the new grossing um, control total brings us to 100%. And then when you're looking at mean median awards, um, you can see that the admin case load is yeah, as an average award of 700, or just over 700 pounds a month. Um, and um, there's a there, there's a particular quirk on the FRS case load estimate will be a bit higher than the admin um, case load. Um, and then we can see that integrating admin data, um, I, I, imputing for unlinked cases has very little change on the uh, on the mean award. And then with the revised grossing, we're slightly different. There's there's a variation across different benefits. What the final impact when you have the um, the, the revised grossing applied as well. So the final thing I would say here is, which I think is quite illustrative of the um, value of um, our overall process. Um, obviously, DWP has published expenditure tables um, across all of the benefits. So for 22, 23, the published expenditure on universal credit was 43.4 billion. Um, what we've done then is we have just taken our admin caseload um, estimate um, and we have multiplied that by the our mean um, monthly award to get an admin caseload estimate of 41.5 um, billion. So there's slightly differences in um, you know there, there, there yeah there are there are there are various reasons why just multiplying the case load by the average or the mean um amount won't get you exactly the published expenditure table um, but we're pretty close there as you as, as you can see it's, it's it's kind of a benchmark to, to compare uh, what the effect of integration and revised grossing is so the frs case load estimate is 30 billion integrating admin data is 33 um imputing for unlinked cases has negligible difference and then we're getting fairly close 40.9 million um, with our revised grossing. So the next steps on our project, um, we're really looking forward to working on the HMRC RTI and self-assessment data when it comes in. <clears throat> Obviously, earned income from PAY and self-assessment is the vast majority of household income. Um, so it is very important to see what um, all of the kind of analysis that we've been doing on benefits, what that will look like um, with the long full series of RTI and the comprehensive self-assessment data. Um, we're also going to be looking to work on some of the other minor um, data sources, and we're hoping that we'll finish the main work and we'll be able to do a, a, a new um, experimental publication um, for next March, which will include PAYE self-assessment as well as benefits. So I'll leave it there. <clears throat> Thank you very much.